all the places on Earth during the Mesozoic, the most fascinating might just have to be China. This country was home to some of the most peculiar animals during the age of dinosaurs, such as some of the first flying theropods as well as some of the largest known feathered dinosaurs in New Tyrannus. Just last video we covered Chantungosaurus, the largest known hadrosaur also found in this country, but an animal that might just be as fascinating as some of these species if not more so wasn't a dinosaur at all. This was a mammal. This wasn't just any ordinary mammal however. This animal was big. Like really big by mammalian standards. This animal was known as Repinamamus, and at the size it was, this animal managed to feast on prey far larger than the smaller creatures it was known to predate. This animal had the ability to tackle dinosaurs. First off, what kind of mammal is Repinamamus exactly? Well, not unlike many of the mammals during its time, it was part of a group completely unrelated to those mammals that live among us today. The ancestors of this animal branched off from our familiar placentals and marsupials way back in the early Jurassic. What about the monotremes you might ask? Well, those weirdos aren't even grouped in with those live birth and pouch having animals. They're all the way in their own southern group of animals and honestly I thank god that they're still with us today because man do I love platypi and echidnas. We could go a bit deeper into the classification of Repinomamus, but Mesozoic mammal taxonomy can be quite a mess and is constantly in a state of flux. What is important, however, is that this animal belonged to a mid-Jurassic family of mammals known as Gobiconodontidae, a clade of animals found throughout Asia and North America. There are a few traits of this group that set it apart from modern mammals. For one, their teeth are triconodont, meaning that they possess three different cusps with teeth on the upper and lower jaw able to interlock with one another. Another feature is their epipubic bones, something that placental mammals don't have but is present in living marsupials and monotremes. This has led some to believe that gobiconodonts like Repinomamus may have laid eggs or had a pouch, though later studies have debated whether this bone had much to do with reproductive faculties and was simply a structure meant to brace the skeleton during movement. There are a few species of Repinomamus, with some measuring just around 16 inches and weighing 8 to 13 pounds, such as Repinomamus robustus. Others, like Repinomamus giganticus, were over a meter in length and weighed over 30 pounds. At sizes like that, that easily made Giganticus the largest Mesozoic mammal by quite a bit. These animals also had prominent and sharp canines and incisors, traits indicative of the group's carnivorous lifestyle. This animal, like many mammals of its time, likely snacked on a variety of smaller prey, from small birds, reptiles, and other mammals. But as we've been annoyingly hinting this whole video, this animal had the potential of even tackling larger prey. There was past evidence already hinting towards Repinomamus' unusual diet, such as a 2005 discovery of a fossil of the mammal with the bones of a baby Cetacosaurus inside its stomach. This dinosaur, despite its diminutive size, was a very early member of the grouping Ceratopsia. Now if that name sounds familiar to you, then it should. That's the name of the clade containing dinosaurs like Styracosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, and of course Triceratops. So it seemed that while dinosaurs such as T-Rex and its relatives were out hunting the larger members of this group, their smaller ancestors were getting slimed out by mammals. The problem that scientists had, however, was determining if Repinomamus could only really hunt baby dinos like this one, or if it was able to tackle prey of a far more formidable size. Well, seven years later, in the Liaoning province of China, we finally got our answer when a farmer managed to uncover a jaw-dropping fossil. This seemed to depict the mammal measuring about 46.0 centimeters in length, fighting a far older Cetacosaurus. Man, what is it with East Asian having crazy fights with Ceratopsians preserved so well? Analysis on the fossil indicated that the Cetacosaurus was over three times the size of the Cretaceous mammal, measuring 119.6 centimeters long and weighing in at about 35 pounds. Now keep in mind that the Repinomamus species they found was Robustus, the smaller of the two known species. Giganticus was almost as heavy as the Ceratopsian specimen, so imagine the kind of prey that that animal would have been able to tackle. And yes, this mammal was actively hunting the dinosaur, as tooth marks on the skeleton of the Cetacosaurus show that Repinomamus was clamping down around its ribs. Why hold on to prey in such a way if the animal was merely scavenging on a dead corpse? Add to that the position of the Cetacosaurus, which made it seem as if it were defending itself, and it's clear that what we're witnessing here is an active battle. So did Repinomamus lead to an eventual mammal uprising of sorts? 
where bigger and bigger mammals manage to take on bigger and bigger dinosaurs? Well, the way that I, as a mammal enjoyer, see Repinamamus is similar to how I, as an Indian, view the few medals my country has won at the Olympics. A praiseworthy exception, but an exception all the same. So yeah, Repinamamus was indeed the biggest mammal we ever got in the Mesozoic. There's an argument that perhaps if the era had lasted longer, there would have become a sizable mammalian threat, but let's be for real here. There was like 57 million years since that animal went extinct, and no mammal ever exceeded it in size. We were never beating the smaller than a household pet allegations. Really, the only thing that could have created that true mammal super predator a lot of people fantasize about would be if a group of mammals were sequestered to a small portion of the earth, far from other dinosaurs. General isolation has historically led to the growth and diversification of some groups, seen with the terror birds and sporacidonts of Cenozoic South America, and more famously the marsupials of Australia. But that's the thing about the planet back when dinosaurs and mammals first evolved, it was all one big continent, meaning that there was really nowhere the mammals could run from the terrible lizards. Of course, don't let any of that take away from what Repinamamus managed to accomplish. It showed us that not all mammals during the age of dinosaurs were tiny, helpless animals forced to live in the shadows of their larger neighbors. It gives us greater insight into the Mesozoic beyond those larger dinosaurs that ruled the planet. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like my video, make sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.